Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be going over the three biggest mistakes that I think the Washington Commanders made during the 2022 offseason so far. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content on the road to 8,000 subscribers. So please help me get there. Also hit that like button and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Now, let's get right into it. So overall, the Washington Commanders have had, you know, solid offseason so far. Like they got an upgrade at the quarterback position, the most important position in football. And he, at the very least, will be a slight upgrade over Taylor Heineke, but has the potential to be a huge, huge upgrade over what we got from Taylor Heineke last year, you know, Carson Wentz at his best is one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Like even 2019 Wentz is a top 10 guy. So if we can get that or even a slightly worse version of that, the Washington Commanders will be much improved. So that was a good move. They made some nice low key signings like Andrew Norwell. F.A. Obata, Trey Turner. They also had some solid draft picks as well, but they definitely had some mistakes. And real quick, I am pre recording this, so recording it on June 15th, so some small things might have changed. So one the one of the biggest mistakes I think they've made is not pay Terry McLaurin yet. And yes, I know that's you know some of that is out of their control, but the market has gone up and up. And up where you know originally we thought Terry was probably gonna get around 20 mil a year now or maybe a little bit more now it's looking like 23 is probably or at least 22 is where it starts but it's probably gonna be more it's probably gonna be you know 23 24 maybe even 25 million dollars but if you would have offered him let's say 22 at the start of the offseason I think he probably would have accepted but who knows? Maybe, you know, I don't know. But every single, you know, time a new receiver signs a deal, pretty much the market goes up. It started with Christian Kirk and then, you know, some other guys like Mike Williams got a $20 million deal. And then some other guys like Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, they just kept on going up and up and up. And I don't know, like at this point, like, you know, Terry McLaurin is going to have to get paid in the 23 to 25 million dollar range but if they would have done it earlier they pr probably could have gotten him you know done for 22 million dollars and now it's there's some doubt where if you know if they're even going to get a deal done with terry mclaurin so i think they made a bad move there waiting and again not all in their control like terry could have been like you know what I think we should wait. I think we should wait until all these other receivers get get deals done so that you know they drive up the market. And there's still some guys like DK Metcalf hasn't gotten his deal yet. Again, pre-recording the same thing with Debo Samuel, Deontay Johnson, that you know, that could drive up the market even more. But I think they could have done this earlier and given him a you know high offer like $22 million, and I think he would have taken it. But now that the market has gone up and up and up, I think the starting point is 23, 24 million dollars. I had someone say, like when I said like 23 is fair for Terry McLaurin, someone said there's no way he's taking 23. I think if they offer I don't know what they've offered him, but I think that's a fair amount for Terry McLaurin. Like you look at Stefan Diggs, I think Stefan Diggs is a better receiver than Terry McLaurin. Who knows how good, you know, how high you know, Terry McLaurin's stats will be this year with Carson Wentz and better receivers around him. But like Diggs, I think is better than him and he's making around $24 million. So I think 23 is fair. But if you want to say 24, I think that's fine. Then 25 is a little high, but you know, AJ Brown got that because usually guys who get traded for their contracts are a little bit higher because the team is forced to give him an extension usually so the player has more leverage and then you, you see guys like cup who has 26 hopkins 27 like he's not going to touch those guys but i think like he could get oh maybe at the max i could say i could see 26 million dollars where cup is and the minimum is probably 22 23 million dollars like dj moore like you look at dj moore like he's had actually better production than terry mccoy in the last few years but they signed him early and they got him for a little over 20 million dollars a year i think it's 20.5 or 21 million dollars and i think terry mccoy overall is a better receiver just because again you have to think about the quarterbacks he's played with and the receivers he's played with but 
DJ Moore's also played with bad QBs, and he's had great, great production. Like, he is one of the better receivers in the NFL, and they signed him to an extension for about $20, $21 million a year earlier in the offseason. I think it was before the draft. So that is something that if they would have done that, I think, ter- you know, and maybe added a couple million to it per year, I think Terry would have, you know, accepted that. So I think that was a big mistake for them. And again, if they do it now or, you know, before training camp, I think it'll be fine. But if they wait, if Terry balls out this year and they wait until next year, you know, after this season or free agency, the price is going to go up by a few mil. Like he's probably going to be in that $27 million range if he goes out there and gets like 1200 1250 yards because not only did his production go up but the salary cap is supposed to significantly go up next year so big mistake in my opinion not paying him earlier the next one like they have no linebackers on the team again pre-recording this but still right now you look at sorry about that you look at the linebackers on the team it's cole holcomb jamin davis Khalid hudson to john harris drew white David Mayo, Milo Eifler, Trey like Trey Walker, like look at these linebackers. Like you're start, <clears throat> sorry, you're starting linebackers right now. If you have three linebackers, which a lot of the times they have two linebacker sets, but your starting linebackers are looking like Cole Holcomb and Jamin, da- Jamin Davis on the outside with David Mayo as your middle linebacker. To me, I, I do not feel comfortable with that at all. Even with just Cole Holcomb and Jamin Davis. Like, I don't really feel comfortable about that. Like, Jamin Davis, like, we're hoping he takes a big step in his, you know, rookie year or in his second year. We don't know that, though. We do not know that. So, to me, not signing or drafting a linebacker early is a big mistake. Like, I didn't want them to draft a, you know, linebacker in the first. Even a second's a little bit too early. But, you know, even the second was actually, okay, like, second to fourth round range would have been good. Like, Chad Muma would have been a good guy. Uh, I forgot the other, I think it was Wyoming or Wisconsin linebacker, Troy Anderson also. Like, there was a lot of good, you know, linebacker options that they could have gotten in the draft, but also in free agency as well. And there's still some good free agents as well, like AJ Klein. Maybe by the time this video is posted, AJ Klein is signed because I think that's someone who they definitely are going to try to get if these linebackers don't progress. But the linebacking core is the biggest weakness on this team. Like, even if Jamin Davis ends up being a star, okay, even if he ends up being a star this year, which is not going to happen, guys, but let's say he does, your linebacking core is still not good because your top three linebackers are Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, and David Mayo. And if you say, well, they play in two linebacker sets, okay, well, if Cole Holcomb gets hurt or Jamin Jamin Davis gets hurt, well, you're starting David Mayo. You're playing David Mayo. If one of those two guys gets hurt, you're playing David Mayo 100% of the snaps. That is not something you want to do. Or you're playing Kalee Hudson 100% of the snaps. I like Kalee Hudson, but he's not like an every down linebacker. He's kind of a hybrid between linebacker safety. Possibly could play that Buffalo nickel position, but it's just a big mistake not adding a single linebacker besides some of the undrafted free agents. And those guys are just going to be, you know, fighting for the, you know, fighting for a roster spot. And that's only because of how bad our other linebackers are. So that is a mistake in my opinion, for sure. Next mistake is not re-signing Tim Settle. I mean, I think it would have been, I mean, he got a two year, $9 million deal. So about 4.5 mil per year, but like that was when the deal was reported. So I think the cap hits are much lower and it's more of like a two year, 7.5 mil. So like that is really reasonable for a guy that can be a solid defensive tackle for you. Like right now we got Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen and Fedarian Mathis. And I mean, that's it. We need someone, and I love the first two guys, and I like the potential of Fedarian Mathis, but, like, you need another guy for sure, and they got some guys that, you know, are tweeners in between, you know, edge rusher and D-tackle, but I really think they, you know, they need another guy. Maybe they get Starluke Talele or another defensive tackle, but... 
Tim Settle would have been a very cheap option. Like right now, they got like 19 million cap space, and they're not going to spend it on anything besides maybe a Terry McLaurin extension, and they're still going to have money left over. So I just don't really understand why they let Tim Settle go. Like they didn't even offer him a deal. Like some people are like, oh, well, Tim Settle didn't, you know, choose to be here. He didn't want to be here. Well, we didn't give him that option. We did not even give him that option. So that to me was very, very disappointing, and it forced us to draft it didn't even force us to do it but it made it more uh, a, you know more of a need to draft a defensive tackle early and we draft a guy in the second still don't love the pick we'll see how it ends up you know turning out um but i think that that kind of forced your hand right there and if you you know keep tim settle then maybe you don't need to draft a d tackle until the third or fourth round and maybe even Federian mathis is there in the third who knows that's just my thoughts. I think Tim Settle, you know, you could have had Tim Settle and maybe a rookie, like a third round guy or a fourth round guy, and that would have been really, really good. And you could have spent that second round pick on a linebacker or another position need. I, I don't know. You know, it's not a, the end of the world, but I just think it was 100% a mistake. And the whole way they just approached the first week of free agency, like that was terrible in my opinion. Like just the way they did things with McKissick, with Tim Settle, and then also like they released Ionitis on like three or four days after free agency started instead of just, you know, they knew they were going to release him. Why not release him before it started? Because then they could have just kept settled. So all that, like the whole first week was a big mistake. They got rid of Flowers, who I guess, you know, they ended up getting Andrew Norrell, so I'm not upset about it. But the whole first week of free agency was just mind-boggling to me, really. And yeah, so those are kind of the three mistakes that I think the Washington Commanders made this offseason. Let me know if you guys agree on it. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and peace.